Here I'll go through an example of a commodities futures contract. This is a contract that's traded on a market exchange like the Chicago Board of Trade. First I'll explain how this contract works, then I'll show how to calculate its fair value to determine any gains or losses on the contract, and then finally show how to record this contract on a balance sheet and on the income statement. Okay, a good example of these contracts would be where a farmer is selling grain in the future when the crop is ready to harvest and a food manufacturing company like a cereal company would be buying, buying grain in the future when they need it. Both want to lock in prices so they agree on a futures exchange price. So at the contract inception here or the start date of the contract, the buyer and a seller agree to buy and sell at a specified forward rate or forward price here. And by doing that, the buyer of this commodity in this case the food manufacturer sacrifices the possibility of having to pay a lower price in exchange for eliminating the risk of paying a higher price whereas the seller of the commodity, the farmer in this case, sacrifices the possibility of selling at a higher price in exchange for eliminating the risk of selling at a lower price. Okay, in the future when this exchange occurs, this spot rate here will most likely be either higher or lower than the forward rate agreed on. So looking at it in terms of our seller, the farmer here, he would have had a loss because he uh, gave up something here of greater value than he, what he received. He could have received um, 69 cents a pound, but he only received in this case 61 cents a pound. So in the case of our uh, buyer, the cereal manufacturer, he had a gain because he uh, received something here of worth 69 cents a pound when he had to only pay 61 cents a pound for it. Okay, to account for the contract, I'm going through an example here by looking at the cumulative change in the fair market value of the contract from period to period, and then look at these changes from the beginning of the contract to the end of the contract. And to do this, we have to compare the current period's forward rate or price here with the contract forward rate or price and that's the agreed on price between the buyer and the seller here and then multiply the difference times the quantity that's under contract and that would be the fair uh, market value of the contract for the period that we would be looking at. Okay going through an example here to determine the fair value for each period starting with our May 1st period we're looking at our forward rate here of 0 0.660 and we compare that to the 0 0.610 forward rate here at the contract start date or that's the agreed forward rate here and the difference here times our quantity would be a $5,000 increase here. Then looking at our June 1st period here we take the forward rate of 0 0.670 and compare that to the contract start date here the agreed upon rate of 6.10 and then that also was an increase times our quantity here so we had a six thousand dollar increase in the market value of the contract and then looking at our last period here the June 30th period we take the 0.690 uh, forward rate and compare that again to the contracted rate here of 0.610 and taking that times our quantity so we had an eight thousand dollar increase here in the fair market value of the contract and then to determine our a cumulative uh, change here in fair market value for each period taking our starting with our May 1st period here we take the fair value for that period of five thousand dollars and subtract out the uh, contract uh, of value here at the start of the contract which is zero so we had a change here in fair value of five thousand dollars then looking at our June 1st uh, change here in fair value, we would take the uh, contra or the change here of $6,000 for the period here of June 1st of, and subtract out the previous uh, period ch uh, change here of $5,000. So we had a, a cumulative change here of $1,000. Then looking at our last period here of 630, we would take the uh, 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 fair market value here of $8,000 for the period and then we'd subtract out the previous period of $6,000 so we had a change here in fair market value on 630 of $2,000. So looking at our cumulative change here for the May 1st period of $5,000 plus the June 1st period of $1,000 and then add the change here for 630 of $2,000 and that would be $8,000 and that uh, would match here the change in the uh, fair market value of this contract from the beginning to the end here of $8,000. 
All right. Our changes in fair value for our futures contract, that would be the same as we've calculated here for the changes in fair value for each period. And that's because our futures prices here represent the current value of the contract. And we wouldn't require any discounting for this futures contract because they do represent the current value. Okay, in summary, to determine any gain or loss on the contract depends on whether you're the buyer or the seller. So looking at our farmer here who was selling the uh, uh, grain here under contract, he would have experienced the loss because he would have received less here based on the contract price than had he sold the grain here at an increased future rate. And then looking at our buyer here, the uh, cereal manufacturer, he would experience the gain because he would have paid less for the uh, uh, grain here under contract than had he purchased it here at an increased future rate. Okay, to record this futures contract on our balance sheet and our income statement, we have to set up two accounts here, a brokerage payable account and a brokerage margin account. Now the brokerage payable account, this is where we recognize any gains or losses on the contract. Now looking at it from our seller's perspective here or the farmer's perspective where we experience the loss on the contract, we would credit our brokerage payable account for that amount and then we'd recognize it here on our income statement as a loss here. So we debit our gain or loss here or increase our loss here in income statement. And then at the end of the period, we would close out this brokerage payable account here by debiting for the, that amount of loss that we recognize here. And then we credit or we reduce our cash by the amount of that loss. And then for our brokerage margin account, that's only an account that we have to set up for this contract to maintain a balance here with our broker. broker. So at the beginning of the contract, we had debited it for $30,000. That's where we had to pay the cash here or credit our cash or reduce our cash by that amount. And then at the end of the contract, we just closed out this brokerage margin account here by crediting it and then debiting the um, $30,000 here through the cash by increasing our cash for that amount. Okay, looking at it from the buyer's perspective, or in this case the cereal manufacturer's perspective where we had a gain on the contract, we would debit or reduce our brokerage payable amount for the amount of that gain, and then we'd credit or increase our gain here as part of our net, recognize it here on net income. And then at the end of the period, we'd close out this brokerage account here and we'd debit or increase our cash account by the amount of that gain. In summary, the key point of a futures contract is that its current value here is represented by the market exchange price or the forward exchange rate for this futures contract and that the total change in value of this futures contract is measured as the difference between the forward rate here, the agreed on rate at the uh, start of the contract or the contract inception date here and the spot rate at the forward date or the contract settlement date and then you take that uh, difference times whatever quantity is under contract and that would give you the total change in value of the futures contract.